Oh, so it's wet, it's grey, it's miserable. And we have got the perfect location to photograph on a day like today. Welcome to this beautiful Welsh rainforest. Now I love, I love light <laughs> just as much as the next photographer. I love the drama and moody conditions. However, days like this, they, they really do make up quite a big chunk, perhaps arguably a, a bit of a majority of the days that we spend out with our cameras, where I live at least, you know, in, in Britain and especially this time of year. However, I do think woodland scenarios are the perfect places to come to with your camera on these sorts of days. Now granted, it's not perfect when, uh, you know, when we're out in these sorts of conditions. They're not the best for landscape photography in any location, but I always just think, you know, if you can look out of that window and see miserable conditions and think, I'll go to the woodland instead of thinking, oh, I'm not going to go out with my camera today. It looks terrible out there. That's a massive win in my eyes. Because imagine if you do that like 20 times throughout the year or something, 30 times. That's 30 potential more photography adventures where you might learn something, where you may get a lovely, amazing photograph. You just never know. And on top of that, I mean, how much do I talk about the weather conditions changing? things can change if you're not out if you don't turn up you'll never ever know but yeah for me if I can get past this huge fallen tree here I do think the woodland is one of the best spots to be in these sorts of conditions I mean look at all this stuff here all these mosses and all these ferns none of this is weather dependent and I mean you've probably seen as well a few little trickles, some little streams and stuff, waterfalls, you know, you've got to try and think, what can I get out and shoot that's not really going to be that affected by the weather? And that's why woodland always pops into my mind. In fact, I think a lot of the times the woodland benefits from these sorts of conditions, you know. I mean, down in this valley here, there's a very subtle sort of lingering mist, which is only going to help to add to the atmosphere and then yeah atmosphere there's just so much atmosphere when we've got these sorts of weather conditions i mean i'd take this in a woodland any day of the week over sunshine but yeah like i said i do think the bottom line is you either go out with your camera or you don't and i'd always rather go out just for the enjoyment of it as well just for the experience but like i said you might learn a thing or two that you didn't expect and you might get a photograph or two that you didn't expect and on that note Let's see if we can find something because this is just absolutely beautiful. I'll tell you what it is, it's magical. So I just, I have to get an image of this little section of stream here. It is just, I don't know what it is, just really nice kind of magical feeling. Cascade. I mean, they're just cascades, man, they're just cascades, but the, the few that we've walked past so far have been a little bit messy here. I don't know, it feels like something out of The Hobbit. It's wonderful. Now, a bit of advice that I always try and follow when I'm photographing these smaller scenes like this, it's, well, I suppose the same goes for any photograph, really, but is to put my bag down and I almost try and take the photograph with my eyes before I get my camera out, if that makes sense. And for me in these smaller scenes, it kind of alleviates the want to just get your camera out, zoom in on a random section of the Cascades and take the shot without much thought. I've said this before, sometimes you can get away with that. Probably quite a lot of the time if it's such a beautiful subject. But for me, I like to just bag down, no tripod, no camera, and just, like I said, almost try and take the photograph with my eyes before I get the camera out. And just try and figure out the composition 
methodically and it's fun as well it's enjoyable you know this is my favorite part of photography this little challenge that we've got here this little puzzle that we've got to try and complete so it's perhaps a little bit vague at the minute but you see this little section here that is what i've kind of narrowed everything down to i like the couple of rocks that we've got there i like very specifically see we got this little bend just there i really really like that so idea at the minute is square crop of that section get really zoomed in and yeah i'm gonna get the old camera set up now Yeah, I'm really happy with this and it definitely paid to just take, it was for me, honestly, it was only about 30 seconds. Not to say I'm like that amazing of a photographer, it, it only takes me 30 seconds to find shots, it's not usually the case. But I sort of knew what I wanted in the first place, you know, it was one of them. But just to take that extra little bit of time, kind of got me started, you know. And one thing I always say is, then when you get your camera on the tripod or you get your camera out, whatever, sometimes you end up like disagreeing with yourself a little bit. And that's what I've done here. And that's a good thing. You know, it's a little bit of trial and error, I suppose, is that for our little section of the rocks down here that I'm photographing, I've decided on a five by four crop instead of a square. Small little difference, but it makes all the difference for this composition. So you can see here, if I was to do this as a square, it would just be a bit too cropped in on the right hand side and the left hand side of these cascades. So open it up opening it up to a 5 by 4 just allows us a little bit of breathing room on the right hand side and the left hand side. I popped my polarizer on the front just to get rid of some of the kind of sheen on the top of the water in the clear areas. It really is helping, definitely worth getting it out. And I'm at f9, ISO 400 in order to get one quarter of a second, which for me, as I always feel like I say, seems to be the perfect shutter speed for water that's moving at this sort of speed, you know, this is ideal. And that's that. Nice little first photograph, and I reckon better than I would have thought. So when I first started this advent series, or, or before I started it, I suppose, I was thinking to myself, man, I am gonna hate landscape photography by the end of this. I'm gonna hate doing these YouTube videos, but honestly, I've only got a few videos left now and I'm absolutely loving it. I feel so, so thoroughly inspired. Don't get me wrong. It's been hard work. It's been extremely hard work. Every day is just film a video edit a video film a video edit a video it's it's i've never worked so much in my life but i'm loving it and i think that is for the most part really down to the support that i've had from you, the comments the engagement and i just want to take a quick second to say thank you so much just for watching the videos <laughs> it's, it's absolutely amazing and i'm so so grateful for every single one of you i really am and yeah like i said there's still a good few of these videos left right up until christmas eve please do hit the subscribe button and make sure you tap on that little notification bell so that you get a little update when I release any of these videos. But yeah, all in all, mostly, thank you all very, very much. You're all amazing. I can see a waterfall through the trees. Yes. Wow, what a little beauty of a waterfall, man. That is stunning. So, same as when I took the photograph of the little cascade. Coming back into composition, really. Bag is on the deck. No camera, certainly no tripod or anything like that. And I'm just gonna take the time 
to look. My idea is, we've always sort of got a bit of a rough idea, haven't we, when we first get to a, a location or a subject. Here, I'm thinking long lens and zoom in to the waterfall somewhere into that cascade and try and find a little photograph. Oh, it's mad, you know, because for me, as a landscape photographer, this first little stage of taking a photograph is, or has always been the key. It's the key to composition for me, is this little section where you just allow yourself that time, that kind of 30 seconds like it was before, five minutes, half an hour, however long it takes, bag on the deck. <laughs> Looks bad now because I've got my tripod up, but I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, certainly no tripod or anything like that, no camera, and just relax and take your time and assess the subject or assess the scene and start very slowly trying to put them pieces together. So I'm not going for a shower underneath the waterfall. Uh, I think a lot of you will know this, but if you, if you get a little shower cap, pop it over your camera. It just keeps it dry when it's raining. I suppose even if your camera's weather sealed, just like mine is, it just stops water getting on it, isn't it? Yeah, simple one. So, first things first, let me try and tell you where I wanted to photograph on this subject, because like I said, I was thinking about zooming in with the long lens and getting something a little bit more intimate. So if you look at sort of this section of the falls here on the right-hand side, there's less water, put simply, which means there's more black, there's more rock, and there's more contrast. Whereas that left-hand side over there, it's just an overload of white. So I've really honed in, focused in on this little section here on the right-hand side, where it feels like there's a nice even amount of black and white. And yeah, making sure I'm shooting in that section is absolutely imperative for me here to try and get the photograph that I want and really try and follow through on the compositional idea that I had before I had the camera out and stuff, you know. So 24 to 200 millimeter lens on. I'm in at 200 mil, however, I've put it in the DX mode, the crop sensor mode. So I'm essentially in at 300 mil, really, really far zoomed in. And you can see here, I've popped the camera in a portrait orientation as well, which I was swapping between the two, but I think this one works best. One quarter of a second again, just seems to be working perfectly for this waterfall. And I've actually stuck it in a monochrome as well, because I mean, it's black and white anyway. Just a little quick tip, if you're ever photographing on days like today where it's proper drizzly or you're getting spray from the waterfall and it's all hitting the front of your lens or the polarizer in my case, I stick my camera into a two second or a three second self timer and what I do is hit the shutter button, quickly wipe the front of the lens or the polarizer as it's counting down and then quickly take it away just before it takes the shot. Obviously I'd usually be around here like this. So hit the shutter button, like that, you know, and then it gets the shot. Didn't work that time, but you know what I mean. Coming back to composition, I think in the past, when I thought about composition as a photographer, I'd have always thought about my camera. Where does my camera need to be? How high does my tripod need to be? What focal length should I use? And what lens should, I, you know, it's, you can go on and on. And of course, all these things are so important, but I think the point that I'm really trying to make today, and this, this, is, this is it for me, this is the key to composition, is it's that first stage when you say, oh, that tree looks nice there maybe there's a shot boom and then you're into it then you're into the photographer's mindset of like right i'm trying to make a photograph here and it's that little section before your camera comes out that is the key to composition in my eyes it's where we create our photographs and it's not easy absolutely not oh there's a gate there brilliant i'm going there um it's not easy absolutely not but that is the skill that you've got to 
improve that's a skill that you've got to get a lot better at. and i was just thinking about this actually it's a weird one because like you watch me on youtube and yes i try and deal out some tips and tricks and how to's and everything and you watch other people but you never actually see that really important part of composing a photograph do you on my youtube channel and a lot of other people's is like you just see me get my camera out and take a shot and that's why I think one-to-ones and workshops are really valuable because you get to see that photographer's mindset of that little section where it might, like I said before, it might be 30 seconds, it might be half an hour, could be longer, where they're in that kind of trance-like mindset of, oh, look at this tree, right, now I've got to try and make a photograph. So I've just stopped for a quick second here. A lot of you, a lot of you may remember. Look at that. Instagram live from the past from a few days ago. It's always hard to get my head around, but Des gave me a recommendation to photograph this tree. The Instagram live's still going on now, by the way. Give me a follow on Instagram. <laughs> I'll pop it up on the screen, but yeah. He said, why don't you try and photograph this tree trunk? So I'm giving it a little bit of a go. So everybody on Instagram live there, look got a nice little view oh look the phone's about to fall the phone's about to fall that was good timing i've just got this rubbish this rubbish holster and yeah desi's idea was to take a, a photograph of the tree trunk sort of as is you know something along those lines which i thought was a good idea but i decided to investigate even further and look found this beautiful little it looks like a bit of a spider web with all these water droplets on it so yeah i've been taking a few photographs just uh, it's really weird because i've got the, the live on there and chatting here uh, um yeah taking a few photographs zoomed right in on them beautiful water droplets and just trying to get something a little bit abstract but thanks des <laughs> So I will probably leave you there ladies and gents because I am mad to get back to the van and find a cafe but I really hope you enjoyed today's video and got a couple of little tips on composition and shooting in these sorts of conditions and stuff as well. Get yourself to your local woodland, it's quality whenever the weather's like this but thank you very much for all your support, please hit the subscribe button whilst I'm on this advent series, I'd love to have you along for the next few videos and as always thank you so very much for all of your support and cheers for tuning in to a little live stream as well, quality. See you on the next adventure. Out.